and nurses. I would also add here that we don't necessarily need to take doctors and nurses from Europe. Just turn Tully on here, Jeremy Vine. Tell you something, they don't half talk so fucking bollocks. Should we leave Brexit? Oh, it's all about Brexit now. Well, yeah, we should leave Brexit because we had a democratic vote to leave fucking Brexit and it took us three fucking years to try and get the message across to our British fucking government. But, uh, as we've seen now anyway, uh, imprisoning everybody uh, in their own homes unlawfully, uh, there's your fucking democracy gone out of the fucking window, so democracy is well and truly dead. Sure what to do is your property deal going down. We've got property expert Melissa Lawson 0207 862 22 We'll see you in just a tick. An elver is a young what? Is it an eel? An elver? Yeah, just turned down and it's Jeremy Vine on and they talk about all sorts of debates and that. <clears throat> and the guy's just come on and that Jeremy Vine just says, Well, we need to stay in the European Union. When they need our help right now. What is he a fucking prick or what? Fuck the fucking European Union. What a dictatorship European Union. Because that's all they fucking are. One world government, one world order. That's what European Union's all about. And this guy was telling him, no, we'll let them fucking help themselves. We've got other countries as allies for help us. That's, that's what this guy's just said. We voted out for a reason. We won't get fucking out. I voted out, but I'll tell you something. Won't be making one more vote ever, ever again. Because I don't want to vote for fucking... Well, you see what's just that, and we've been pushed into a lockdown and all this baloney. Uh, your freedom's fucking completely eroded. Look at this fucking advert. Look, they can't help plugging it, can they? Can't help plugging it and ramming it down your fucking throat. This is an advert there. Stay at home, stay safe, protect the NHS. This is. No, you cannot work from home. Stay home. Anyone can get it, and anyone can spread it. Stay home. Protect the NHS frontline staff working to save lives. See, the state of that person they're showing in that I fucking. Guess, See, the state of that fucking body in that bed then. No enough look like some fucking I've seen out of a fucking zombie film. But that must have been fucking hundred plus or something with that fucking body then. And they've got to put a body on like that. Well, you, you're fucking dying anyway if you look at like fucking that. And it ain't the fucking coronavirus. Jesus. Pathetic. Anybody who donates right now to the NHS is a fucking fool. What for? Because everyone's having their heart strings pulled, thinking that fucking doctors are running off their feet ballistic, when that's that's just that's just not happening. If you, if you look all across YouTube, look at the look at the pictures, the videos, dancing in fucking streets and dancing in corridors to fucking songs and that. Five minute fucking videos, especially for bloody put on Facebook and things like that. It just isn't happening, the chaos just is not happening what you're being told on the news, it's not happening. It's one big joke, to be honest with you, if you ask me. How come the government have found enough money for fucking pay everyone while, while you're in lockdown? And yet they couldn't find all the money for the NHS while it's been collapsing for years. Total collapse. And now you've got folk choosing to... Hey, that's another thing. You've got folk choosing bail it out right now, bail the NHS out, raising money. They didn't think about bailing it out and, and all this stuff beforehand for all these previous years that it's been in meltdown. And everyone knows it's been in meltdown. NHS staff and doctors and God knows what have been calling out for fucking years saying what a mess the NHS is and it's in crisis. No one's thought about bailing it out then and raising money. Now all of a sudden, bang on cue, as soon as government starts all their propaganda bullshit all over the fucking news, oh, everyone steps up to the plate, they want to do something for the NHS. That's the power of brainwashing, folks. The power of brainwashing. Mary Agyewa Agyapong worked at Luton and Dunstable Hospital in South 
complete statement. Her baby was successfully delivered by cesarean section on Sunday. Well, so it's more lies, folks. Child is doing very well. In the United States, President Trump has said that the country has passed the peak of a new co of new COVID-19 cases, and will later announce plans to reopen parts of the American economy. Here in the UK, in a leaked letter seen by the BBC, senior social care officials have criticised the government's handling of the pandemic. It describes the national distribution of personal protective equipment to care homes as shambolic. And another development shambolic to shut us down, have you thought about that? Forget your face mask. Fucking election. shambolic shut us down. Fuck's sake, no one thinks about that. Which has seen the number of cases fall from a When does a country ever fucking shut down because of a fucking cold? How many fucking viruses have we have have we lived through before in the past? From his home in North London. And we've never been shut down. Official confirmation then, which many had uh, foreseen, an extension of three weeks to the lockdown in the UK. I think it's a given that uh, this afternoon, when we have the daily Downing Street news conference, the first secretary of state. Dominic Grant will confirm that yes, indeed, the lockdown is being rolled over for a further uh, three weeks. Why? Well, I think he will highlight the lack of absolute scientific data. They are so taking the fucking piss, man. Curve. That said, I mean, there are plenty of encouraging signs. Three weeks fucking lockdown more. Indications that the fucking infections are beginning to Who gives these fucking motherfucking bastards the fucking right the to dictate your fucking life and you beg for it? Two thousand spare critical care beds in London too, which has been really at the forefront of the disease. No it hasn't. No it hasn't, you lying motherfuck. Get yourself into the hospitals and see how empty they are. The fucking dancing in corridors and having parties, you prick. Get yourself down there. Day after day Look on fucking YouTube. More than 700, and it's clear the government wants to see that on a much sharper downward trajectory before they move towards easing um, the lockdown. I think it's all a con. We're all being lied to. Um, surprised, frankly, about the readiness of people to abide by the lockdown. To yeah, <laughs> I was surprised as well. I've discovered how fucking thick human beings truly are. Pure fucking sheep. Pure sheep. Certainly on my mind up this fucking lockdown has. Of how, what, how, 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 how such a bubble I fucking live in. ...prejudge the formal decision that's going to be taken. However, I think everybody can see that we've been clear that we think it is it is too early to make a change. How you think it is, do you? What about what we think? Of Dear the of cases uh, and thankfully a flattening of the number of deaths that hasn't started to come down. Oh, the fake deaths, you uh, mean? You're talking about the fake deaths? Still far too high. The ones that you've been fucking just putting on the fucking coronavirus list. What so we all know about now. You've been fraudulently dodging, up, mocking up the fucking question. coronavirus uh, fake lists. Uh, lists. You, you fucking die on a motorbike and in a motorbike accident or a car accident. What's going to be put on the fucking your death certificate? Fucking coronavirus, COVID-19. Oh, there is subtle words, yes. Uh, telling people stick with it. Oh, in other words, you can come out then. It's just that they're making the choice because you've told them to. That's true. We can all come out. This is unlawful. Unlawful upon you. We would expect the lockdown to, to continue. We would support that. Oh, would you? I'm not surprised you're in government. Before the government. Because you're all corrupt and bent. You want, you, want you, you want your own narrative pu pushed through, don't you, before we come out of his house? We're complaining on Twitter and saying people should be asking about an exit strategy because there's no exit strategy until we get a vaccine. Well, that could be 18 months away. So if the government. God, even this cunt's pushing vaccines. They probably need to tell us. That and I Must be fucking friends with Bill Gates, Sam. Um. The best way to come out of lockdown or to manage a way out of lockdown in the coming months is to move to a testing and contact tracing strategy. 
It was interesting, uh, Matt Hancock was asked on the radio this morning about that tweet by Nadine Doris, the uh, junior health minister, saying in effect to journalists, stop asking questions about the lockdown. And he absolutely stood by it in uh, quite emotive language, saying that communication and clarity of communication... Stop asking questions about the lockdown. Not this, is a, this is major, this is what they've done to the, the, the British people. It's major. The debate you about the lockdown, because clearly it's a pretty vigorous one, and we've been hearing from some influential voices in the scientific community. So Please the state. That actually maybe the government now, how many people, these brain dead people, have actually realised that they've been living in a police state? It's nothing short of a police state. Plan. Particularly when you see that there are other European countries that are beginning to. Martial law, virtually. How much extra pressure Just will no military on the streets, but. <laughs> Fuck me, I never thought I'd live through this in my, own, in my lifetime anyway. Well, I, I think it's almost unavoidable that once we know the lockdown is going to be extended, that minds almost inevitably will turn to what next, and the what next is how do we get out of here. I mean, Matt Hancock has himself opened the debate up a bit. He's talked about... What gives these dickheads the power to, trace to tell you what to do, how to live your life? Stay in your own four homes, not come out in the fucking sunshine and get your fucking benefit fr and get your vitamin D of the sun, which you, you should all be getting. This cunt's alright, isn't he? There's an army of people to go around chasing up contacts because many people, uh, the elderly, those frankly who are less tech savvy, are not going to have mobile phones and they're probably not going to be signed up to apps. So how are you going to trace their contacts? And when you look at countries like South Korea, that is how they've had their success. They have literally employed loads of people to chase around checking who you're in contact with in the local shops, in your workplace, in your street. Now it's massively labour intensive. What's you talking about here? More big brother. Comprehensively as it were, hunt down the virus. Hunt down the virus. I can hunt down the virus. It's fucking you lot in the fucking parliament and the, and, 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 and the fucking royal families. You're the fucking virus in this country. You fucking bastards. You're the biggest fucking virus. I just want to start with how infectious it's believed COVID-19 is if left unchecked and how effective bringing down that infection rate who's this prick going to push the narrative so the lockdown has been incredibly effective uh, there's a magic number called the r naught which is the infectivity of the virus one person would affect 2.6 people at the beginning of lockdown and now it's gone to under one to about well i've not seen nobody with it which is great news. lockdown is working the problem we have i haven't seen anybody keel over i've not seen any fucker die do we do it slowly do we and all the fucking folks who we have heard fucking die will be a load of bullshit. Old people dying of normal fucking causes of every other illness you can think of what people die of on, on a yearly fucking basis yet they've been put on the coronavirus list. Fraudulently as well. Fraudulently. So your government is acting under total corruption right under your nose. Doctoring the fucking death list. And as the fucking bastards. Report, let's see the metric which is deciding the strategy. We don't know what it is. Obviously what other countries do, how the infection rate, the hospitalisation rate, the NHS is in great shape. There are empty beds in London, empty critical care beds, which is good. Oh yeah, I'm not surprised because there's no fucker piling in there with yeah, coronavirus, that's why. Treated, and, uh, you said it, pal. The Reuters news agency just quoting the World Health Organization's European director who says that around 50% of the global burden of COVID-19 is currently in Europe. So the next few weeks, he says, will be critical for the region. How likely, though, is it that as we see restrictions lift, we also see an increase again in infections? Do you? This is what a great argument. Look at all these fucking so idiots have got a crystal ball here. They're pushing the lockdown. They're just pushing the need to be locked down. Although we may have 2,000 empty beds in London, critical care beds, they'll be filled within a week of any sort of lockdown being released. And that, that's the one. 
but we've got plenty to look for. We can look at all the signs in Austria, which we found Tuesday this week. Let's see what happens there. Let's look at Sweden. Let's look at all the countries that have done things differently and learn from them. I think wise decisions. Oh, like China, yeah. Look. It looks as yeah, let's look at China. Uh, That's what you want here, don't you? Communist Britain. But let's modify that if we can, if things get more optimistic. I think the, the, the whole campaign of information by government and by media has been very pessimistic throughout. And I think you know people need a bit of hope, a bit more hope than they're really getting at the moment. A bit of hope? To what Fuck extent yeah. do you believe um, God, man. antibody tests... Your hope won't come from fucking these sort of channels, fucking this, BBC. Uh, uh, the lifting of restrictions because they're known for fucking not lying to people that effective are they and younger people you've been talking in one of the newspapers today about this basically yes on wednesday we, we did antibody tests that we validated them against a very complex laboratory based test these are kits from korea that have been validated in germany already but we did it ourselves and all our stuff and the percentage of positives amongst younger people is very low you know, what I've even heard the testing kits don't do exist. I've heard the, the testing kits, test if they did exist, I've heard they're fucking not working correctly. Whether there's any truth in that, well, that's what's... I've heard. I've even heard that the testing kits are full of the fucking virus and it's that's what spreads uh, this coronavirus. They're already infecting people. I've even heard that. Who knows, people? measured impacts that the lockdown has had on people, those social, psychological and emotional effects. Do you think they're asked negative. about your psychological Twitter issues? Paper. And they've I just extended it to three more weeks? I joined Twitter at the beginning of all this because I wanted to... And they're asked about your psychological problems? No, they don't give a fuck. Let's get moving with cancer and obviously my colleagues in cardiology, heart disease, want to do the same. And, you know, it's a profound effect, some very sad letters uh, from people that have depression already, that have other mental health issues before this. This is tipping, and I'm sure it's been very interesting need to get the data on that. The sooner we can get out of that, the sooner the NHS can get back to normal. It's been hard hit by this. It's done really well, but it's been a year of time to get back to normal. The new normal will be very different for the next few years now within any healthcare provider. He knows some of what we don't know clearly there. We'll let you answer Sounds like Bill Thank Gates talking. We won't never get back to normal and I don't think we ever will because that's the, that's the agenda what they want. That is the agenda that they want. A whole new way of life. And it isn't for your benefit nor mine neither. It's more restrictions on your life, more Big Brother, totalitarian state. He's been itching to do this for weeks. Now the businessman turned politician president is poised to announce that the world's biggest economy will soon be back in business. Okay, thank you very much. The data suggests that nationwide we have passed the peak on new cases. Hopefully that will continue and we will continue to make great progress. These encouraging developments have put us in a very strong position to finalize guidelines for states on reopening the country which we'll be announcing. We're going to be talking about that tomorrow. More than 30,000 Americans have died from the coronavirus, more than in any they country haven't at all. anywhere else in the world. Fucking lying bastards. The hospital admissions are down, and the spread He's coming for something else. Slowed, <laughs> oh, every, every person, you, every person you see in a fucking hospital bed is coronavirus. No. No. So far, just over That's it, stick that in your mouth, you stupid bitch. You don't even know what they're putting in your fucking mouth. Could be actually the actual fucking virus. More 
Is That's how thick the these fucking idiots are. Look at that, man. Get a bit of that up your nose. Yeah, I love. Have a bit of that. Get fucked. You won't be doing that on my fucking nose. You have the actual authority to shut down or reopen uh, facilities within their borders. Uh, the president can provide guidance, uh, he can provide suggestions, and of course, being the president, um, uh, that can, uh, carries a certain amount of persuasive weight, but it is the governors of the United States who actually hold the power. I thought I heard from Americans. Some workers are as keen to see a return to normal as the president himself. Conservatives in Michigan organized this protest against a stay-at-home order Good. proposed by the state's Good. democratic governor. We need this worldwide. So Look at this, folks. Guidelines to make their Let's all adapt this. Millions of Americans have lost their jobs in recent weeks, and the coronavirus has brought an economy that President Trump had taken to calling the greatest in the history of the world to its knees. It's Just what they wanted. To rebuild it. Just what the they wanted. Do you think it? Do you think if they didn't want to bring the, the, the world to its knees, they'd do it? They know what they're doing. Think they, they know what the outcome would be. They know what the disaster would be. If they didn't want it, they wouldn't do it. That's what people don't fucking get. The simple. Officials standing NHS England as opposed to social care. The Department of Health says it's continuing to work closely with the sector. We're joined by our health correspondent, Nick Triggle. Nick, it, it's easy to talk about the National Health Service and social Nick care. Nick Triggle, who's going to talk Lord of Dribble. <laughs> yes, and this letter, which actually was sent uh, before the government announced its new strategy for the social care sector yesterday, illustrates just that. Um, the letter says that there's been mixed messages and conflicting guidance given to care homes that's caused confusion and an additional workload uh, for staff. As you say, on personal protective equipment, it, it says the situation has been shambolic. In the early days of the outbreak, hardly any equipment was getting through to care staff so they could protect themselves. From they didn't need protection. You no know, fuck has been coming in the fucking hospitals. Unlike hospitals, care homes don't have large teams with the fucking coronavirus. Redeploy when uh, it's members of staff have That's why it weren't getting in, because they didn't need it. They've got the virus. And for residents who uh, are infected, there's no dedicated... Was, I've, seen, I've seen even care staff saying more. Many of they've not been issuing, there's been, been no concerns in hospitals to, to give them the equipment. The so they clearly they knew something what everyone else didn't know. And then finally, even on what has been they didn't need it, that's what they knew. That's why the equipment wasn't sent in. Double think, innit? So why aren't these idiots thinking that? They aren't going to spend shitloads of money on sending your shit in when they knew the government knew he wasn't needed. It's only us fit cunts on the outside, brain dead fucking mother bastards. Who believed in the fucking virus, who, who were fucking thick as fuck for, for not seeing it. Uh, social care services so the directors are very concerned about what has been happening you mentioned a new strategy how is it going to change well yesterday at the press briefing uh, matt hancock the health secretary uh, talked about a new approach for social care uh, he wanted to see all residents who uh, all residents certainly changing a lot of things home. into this coronavirus five residents in a care home show changing a lot of things the outbreak is uh, that's the whole reason for doing it by design to, to be new change supply routes to get the protective equipment change your whole the whole association of economics and the system of how things tick in britain sounds great but the, the true test of a plan is giving it all a fur shake up that's what the plan was say that needs to be done very quickly yeah, thank you very much. but idiots won't see that can't see past the nose, they can't take the blinkers off. The World Health Organization warned that relaxing lockdown measures too early risked a second wave of coronavirus outbreaks. But now some countries are moving to ease... Risked a second wave, they told us we were going to get that wave this week. Well, we're on Thursday this week and we ain't seen no wave. So what's the purpose for the extension? What's the purpose for the extension where we're going to see this massive wave this week? There ain't been no fucking wave. So the extension's... Pathetic and useless. There's no wave. 
Germany has had over three and a half thousand deaths from coronavirus, but that's relatively fake deaths. Fake deaths, by the way. A success. They've all been doctoring the list. Rigorous testing. Und wir haben etwas erreicht, was ja keineswegs von Anfang an. We have achieved something which was in no way certain from the beginning. Our doctors, nurses, all those who work in the healthcare system in the hospitals are not overburdened. But the rules Damn of right socializing will stay in place Damn for right not. two weeks, along with a government recommendation that everyone wear a face mask. A similar rules being introduced in Poland. Anyone out in public must now wear something covering their nose and mouth. Italy, Europe's worst hit country. Well, that's bang out of road of Britain doing that on you, forcing you to do that. Had a one be a sheep. <coughs> Only the sheep wear masks. In Venice, bookshops will open once more. So too will children's clothing stores. Caution remains high elsewhere. France is extending its lockdown rules until early May. Belgium until mid May. Across Europe, there is hope. With infection rates slowing and hospitals. God man, this is one of the biggest cons played on humanity. Slowly, cautiously. Who's to say he's got coronavirus? Just because you've seen someone coming out of an ambulance. There are fears that I can go below. I can go below local hospital. Now I'm filming people coming out of out of ambulances if sit there long enough. Doesn't mean it's coronavirus. But today also sees a chartered flight of roughly 180 agricultural workers from Romania arrive at Stansted Airport. I'm joined by Mark Bridgman, who is president of the Country Land and Business Association. Mark, just tell us um, the, the sheer scale of the challenge that uh, food producers are facing in Britain. So I think if we just talk to start with about the seasonal workers, around 90% of seasonal workers typically come from overseas, migrant labour, um, Migrant labour, cheap labour in other words. Um, and Romania. So a combination of travel restrictions plus sickness um, means that there's going to be a major shortage um, potentially this summer. So that's why the employers have been calling out for uh, for people to come forward. Obviously an ex plenty of supply of labour as a result of COVID-19. Uh, the challenge is ma matching that up. Yes, because it's one thing to make an inquiry about a fruit picking job. It's another one to actually go and do it. I mean, it's hard work, but you can earn some decent money. What if people don't actually turn out? What are the foodstuffs that we're going to see either go to waste or in short supply? Well, the, the scale of the challenge is we think over the, you know, the summer we're talking about sort of 80,000 jobs. So there's a, there's a big, the big gap to fill. Um, and you know, this is seasonal food that needs to be picked. If it's not picked, um, it'll rot in the field and have to be um, um, composted. Um, if it's not picked, it doesn't get on the shelves. So, you know, this is really important. Um, and as you say, there are a lot of people have come forward through these agencies. There's a number of big private sector agencies that are pr promoting this Feed, uh, feed the Nation campaign. Um, so far, only, you know, some of those have got, um, have actually lined up jobs. Um, but as you write, fucking the food, fucking the food chain up. Is that because they want government um, eventually yeah, want yeah, fucking the uh, GMO uh, foods so which for the, the whole of the population to be reliant on the government will feed you all their GMO poisoning fucking foods what I've got nothing but shit in all part of the depopulation plan yes I have one of them who is also don't know if any of you know about that but look it up a GMO they want their own fucking conveyor belt of government food, GMO. What, and you can trust your government feeds you fucking decent food? <laughs> fucking hell. So, yeah, in some cases, it's a, um, it'll be a drive away. Um, but if not, I mean, most of these businesses, um, particularly the larger scale ones, are totally used to providing accommodation because typically, as I say, 90% of the labour comes from overseas um, and they have temporary accommodation for them. So, you know, they will have to go through their own um, you know, safety measures, um, social mm. distancing. Um, accommodation can social distancing, social distancing. Well, can anyone come on without the, using that word? Keeping people's uh, interests. Yeah. Uh, Mark Bridgman from the uh, Country Land and Business Association. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Let's uh, look briefly at some of uh, the other news. And the International Monetary Fund has suggested that the UK and the EU not to add to the uncertainty from coronavirus by refusing to extend the period to negotiate a post-Brexit trade deal. Managing Director Kristalina Georgieva said that because of the unprecedented uncertainty arising from the pandemic... Unprecedented. That's another buzzword. ...on top of it. Australia will keep in place restrictions implemented to curb the spread of coronavirus for at least four more weeks. The Prime Minister Scott Morrison said Australia will, over the next month, expand testing and improve systems to trace COVID-19 cases. The Nicaraguan President Daniel Ortega has reappeared after being absent from public view for more than a month. In a televised message, Mr Ortega defended his government's record on fighting coronavirus. He claimed only one person had died of COVID-19 in the country. He said he had not ordered a lockdown to protect the economy. Well, sounds like he's a decent guy then, huh? Whoever he pounds, that's around $1,200 for the National Health Service by walking a hundred laps of his garden. This morning, he managed to complete the task, but he also raised more than 12 million pounds, nearly $15 what a joke. dollars. Messages of support have been What a joke. In. I feel sorry for the guy that they've let him fucking do it, man. Hi, Tom. Ben Stokes here. What you've managed to achieve is absolutely fantastic. The funds that you have managed to raise for the real human... NHS won't get, get that money. You're a fucking yeah, fool, I'm lot of you. Just as well as you are All of you who donated to NHS won't see that. Where do you think your fucking cancer research money goes every fucking year you fucking donate to it, you fit cunts? Certainly ain't on cancer research. Every fucker's dying of cancer. Billions a year goes on cancer research, ra raised money. What are they researching? They've been getting this money fucking year in, year out for years. Everyone's still dying. Just want to say thank you very much indeed for everything you've done. It's amazing. Look at uh, these retards. on a brilliant idea and pulling it off and uh, doing it all before your 100th birthday and donating millions and millions of pounds to the National Health Service. What an incredible... It's lucky you know, this guy hasn't yeah, fucking died through fucking and exhaustion. It's a wonder this old guy hasn't died of exhaustion, eh? Hey? 100, 100 paces or something up and down his garden and ra raised money for the NHS. And these lot of fucking men let him do it. And the millions of pounds you've raised for the NHS will be put to good use as we continue to tackle well, the virus together. I don't think so. I mean, who the fuck's this fucking big eared cunt? He appeared in. He has appeared in Parliament. I don't know who he is, where he's come from, and fuck all, he elected him. I fucking didn't. On behalf of the whole Yorkshire Regiment family, I'd like to say thank you to you, Captain Tom Moore for your amazing fund-raising efforts on behalf of the NHS. When I last looked, you You're had idiots, a lot of you. million pounds. You're and idiots. That number continues to rise. Paying into you any fund these days, you're a fool, because no one, where, wherever it's supposed to go, don't even fucking, in half of it won't even reach there, whatever. Thank Percentage you, won't, won't, won't go to where it goes to. Thank you, Captain Tom, from the NHS. It all goes into the big wigs' back pockets before it reaches anywhere. Captain Tom Moore approaching his 100th birthday, 100 laps of his garden. Why, and he got back. coronavirus. All of the money going to NHS charities, a guard of honour from the first battalion. His immune system should be completely Caribbean. fucked, shouldn't it? Inches to go, and there he is. Congratulations. Well done. Absolutely amazing, amazing achievement. Uh, Captain Tom, how do you feel this morning? Fine, I mean, yes. I mean, I'm really <coughs> fine. Fucking Elman. He's lucky he survived this. I couldn't see. That was a sedate, measured commentary by my colleague John Maguire. Well, we can show you now Captain Tom's fundraising page. More what a fucking pounds, joke. That's more than $15 million. Still climbing. It's gone up to twelve million four hundred. What a joke. pounds sixty four p I don't know where that came from. Down the back of the sofa, probably. That's gone up by £100,000 in just one hour. Thank you to Tom and thank you to everyone who's donated. We'll tell you something. I think it's the people of Britain who are fucking living on the bread line. People who've lost businesses. Their lives are on the fucking line, struggling. That money should go to fucking them. 
Not the fucking NHS who the government can... Uh, uh, you pay into your NHS. What do you think all your fucking taxes and fucking national insurance, all that fucking... Everything you pay in. It's for the NHS, what you pay the government. They should be supporting up the, for the fucking un NHS. Not you fucking funding your own NHS again, but you're that fucking fake. You fucking do it. In a neat letter, they describe the distribution of the Well, like I say, all the fucking money, what you push into fucking cancer research every year, billions. Yet everyone's still dying of it. Well, where's the money going? Where's the fucking, where's the, where's the research? It's all bullshit. Anyway, that's the fucking news today. I've kept my mouth shut for most of it, but just uh, have your own opinions on what was said with all this bullshit, but a lot of it is bullshit. I mean, that guy, that soldier's done it, you know, good for his country, whatever he fought in the war, you know, he's reached a fucking fantastic age. That's off to the guy, but I don't he's been a hero. In his early days, and he's been a dickhead in his later days, raising funny for raising money. Sorry for something that uh, our government have already been paid for to re spend on his NHS. Shouldn't be left down to the public, and certainly not a guy of his age. So for me, I think that's just taking the piss.